Good morning and warmest welcomes to Trinity Episcopal Church on Galveston Island. I'm the Reverend Jimmy Abbott, the priest here at Trinity, and I'm so glad that you have joined us for our special online service today, Sunday, May 22nd, 2022. Please know that our in-person worship services continue at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. every Sunday morning. If you'd like to know more about our church, please visit our website, trinitygalv.org. And while you're there, you can explore our dif different ministries, you can make a financial gift, and you can fill out the Contact Us form so that we may greet you and welcome you and get you connected to the life of our church. Our online service this morning begins with a reading from the book of Revelation. In the spirit, the angel carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there any more, for the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him, and they will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night, they need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Here ends the lesson. Today I want to do something a little bit different for the sermon. I want to walk through that reading we just had from Revelation. I don't do this often, you know, but sometimes it's good to have a bit of teaching instead of just preaching. So let's dig in, and you'll see the words come up on your screen as I talk about them. In the Spirit, the angel carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. Now, anytime anybody goes up a mountain in the Bible, alarm bells should be going off for you. Something big is about to happen. Moses and the Ten Commandments, Jesus and the Transfiguration. Here it's St. John seeing the holy city. And notice this too. The holy city Jerusalem comes down out of heaven from God. It's not that people are sucked up to heaven at the end. It's that heaven comes down to earth, and that's different. But also what a gift, right? God does not want to destroy the earth. This isn't about God taking all the righteous people away and leading, letting everyone live in a post-apocalyptic Mad Max wasteland. Instead, God loves the earth so much that God is willing to donate heaven to earth. Let's move on. St. John sees no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. There's no place to carry on the sacrifices, of course, because Jesus Christ, the Lamb, is the sacrifice. There's no particular place to worship there because it is all a place of worship. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light and its lamp is the Lamb. Okay, let's stop there for a bit. The lamp is the lamb. I mean, lambs don't glow unless they're radioactive, right? 
So I don't think this is meant to be a literal image of Jesus, the Lamb of God, emitting light as we understand light. This is a vision. This is poetry. I don't think we should be making all these two literal. Let it breathe a little bit. In God, there is no darkness at all, like the great hymn says. This is both good news and hard news. The good news, of course, is that at the end, there will be no darkness, no wandering around blindly, no trying to see God and missing it. The Lord God will be clearly known to everybody, and there will be no night. The hard news, of course, is that this means that everything will be revealed. We won't be able to hide anything anymore. We'll have to be our real selves. There won't be any way to deceive. Everything will be out in the open. Let's press on. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. God is choosing to bring all peoples, all nations, into the holy city. There are no longer outsiders and insiders. There's no us and them. There is only the people of God. And watch out for this zinger. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. This is what God has in mind for the holy city. The gates are always open. Access to God is free to everyone. The gates are not there to keep people out, but rather the gates are there to show people how to get in and the gates are always open it says they would shut the gates at night but there's no night there because the lamb is always shining this is so different from how we live our lives in which we build gates fences walls emotionally to keep people out but god has a vision in which all people come in And also think of this as an epiphany image. You know, epiphany, 12 days after Christmas, we three kings of Orient are. They bring their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to baby Jesus. This is the same thing on a bigger scale. It says all people, all nations, all kings will bring their offerings to God. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. Now, of course, it does say that nothing unclean will enter it nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Well, I think that's because the light of God will burn away all of our sins, abominations, and falsehoods. God is holy, and God will not tolerate anything unholy. So the unholy will be burned away. Again, good news and hard news. But there's more. It says, then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. So check this out. We're at the very end of the Bible. But suddenly, really, we're back at the beginning. This section here is like the Garden of Eden all over again. The river of the water of life, the tree of life. And whereas the tree of the knowledge of good and evil caused the downfall of humanity, here the tree of life is for the healing of humanity. In a way, the Bible is a big circle, and we've made our way back to the beginning. And then we have this last part. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. You should hear Handel's Messiah there, and they shall reign forever and ever. But more than that, it says that the servants of God will see God face to face. Again, this is getting back to the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve walked and talked with God, when they saw God face to face. This is the last time I'll say it, good news and hard news. The good news is that we'll see God face to face. The hard news is that God's unblinking, unwavering, eternal vision will be fixed on us. 
Nothing accursed will be found in the holy city. Nothing accursed will be found in us because it will have been burned away. Like I said, I don't do this type of Bible study sermon often, but I couldn't resist today. This passage is just too good. So I want to end with one broad comment. Heaven is a city. That's the image given to us today. Cities. All packed in with people, with busyness and bustling and things coming and going. The vision of heaven is not a farm or a ranch or your place out in the country on the river by yourself. The vision is not heaven as your beach house to get away from it all. Heaven is a city packed with people, with gates that are always open, with lights that are always on. That's really the story of humanity, isn't it? We started in a garden out in the wild, but we've evolved and made our own habitats, cities with buildings and streets and places to eat and hang out. That's the big thing I'm taking away from studying the passage this week. Our hope, the vision that God has for us is that we're together living shoulder to shoulder. In this day and age, we do everything we can to divide ourselves, to segment ourselves into this category or that category, as we still struggle with all sorts of issues of identity about who we are and where we came from. But God has something very different in mind. God has in mind a holy city, the heavenly Jerusalem, with all nations living together in perfect harmony and in perfect peace. Not because we have figured it out or how we have figured out how to get along, but because we're all looking at Jesus together. Because we've all eaten of the fruit of the tree that is for the healing of the nations. Heaven is all of us together. One people living in one city, worshiping one gracious God. Amen. As we move in our online service to a time of prayer, I invite you to type your prayer requests into the comment section so that we can be praying with and for each other. And please know that if you have any particular prayer requests to reach out to the church office or to reach out to me, and we would be more than honored to hold up those prayers for you. Now we pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the prayer that is the collect for this Sunday. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Again, thank you all so much for joining us for our online worship service. Please know that our full worship services do continue every Sunday at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Both services have Holy Communion, and our 10.30 service has a children's program, as well as music with our choir and organ. We would love to worship with you and to be with you. Of course, if you would like me to come and bring you Holy Communion wherever you are, please know that I would be honored to do so. Reach out to me or or to the church office, and we can set that up so that you can share with us in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now for a final blessing.
the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.